Hey folks, it's Jim from the Movie Wine here to review James Cameron's The Terminator. Kyle Reese, played by Michael Bean, is a member of the Human Resistance in the year 2029, where Los Angeles, along with most of the post-apocalyptic world, has been reduced to rubble. Reese has traveled back to the time of 1984 to protect the mother of John Connor, who leads the resistance against Skynet, an artificial intelligence network that initiated the nuclear war against mankind. The mother is Sarah Connor, played by Linda Hamilton, who is unaware of the danger she's in. Skynet has sent an indestructible cyborg known as the Terminator, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, back in time to eliminate Sarah Connor. During the release of Piranha 2, the spawning, a not-so-impressive directorial debut from Cameron, the filmmaker had a nightmare that envisioned a metallic torso that would eventually become the Terminator. Using that as inspiration for his new film, Cameron was also influenced by the Harlan Elson Outer Limits and simple stories like Walter Hill's The Driver and George Miller's The Road Warrior, which had an effective single-minded objective. After Cameron fired his agent, who hated the film premise, Cameron sold the rights to his script for $1 to Gail Ann Hurd, who would go on to produce the flick with Cameron directing. With financial backing by John Daly, the original budget was raised. After that, the rest was history. After Cameron turned down the hilarious suggestion of O.J. Simpson as the Terminator, Schwarzenegger came on board as the lead hero initially, but Cameron felt his physical built body was more appropriate for the Terminator, utilizing his silence and his screen presence. The rest of the cast followed, and though Cameron couldn't get the legendary makeup artist Dick Smith to work on the flick, Smith proposed the next best thing, his friend Stan Winston. The Terminator is an action classic that operates as a cautionary sci-fi picture and as a horror film. Aside from the time paradox, the story is simple and straightforward enough. Some prefer the sequel, and I believe I do as well. That being said, while both stories are fairly similar, they both have plenty to offer. T2 provides more backstory, finds a new hero in the young John Connor, shows the definitive bulked up and protective Sarah Connor, and cleverly makes Schwarzenegger the hero of the picture. As for the original Terminator picture, it moves arguably more efficiently. It's tight while giving us glimpses of the future and insight into the primary heroes who happen to fall in love within this dire situation. Of course, more than Reese played with loving worship for the waitress by Michael Bean, this is Sarah Connor's story as the mother of the hope of the future. Plain but in a relatable way, Hamilton is vulnerable as Connor, but equally strong. Strong motherly figures just come with the territory when it comes to Cameron. As for Schwarzenegger, he's used wisely. I want to be clear on this. While Schwarzenegger has never been a great actor, he's generally been a smart one, completely aware of his limitations. For a bodybuilder, he's always had a knack for comedy. Of course, this is more of a straight-laced performance, using his imposing figure to scare anyone who passes him. His resistance to enemy gunfire make him a fitting horror figure. He just keeps going. Other than that, the cast is small. Paul Winfield and the always great Lance Henriksen show up briefly, trying to protect Sarah Connor at the police station, while Earl Bowen, who later would be in the sequel, is the perfect prick psychologist who doesn't believe Reese's war stories. This is great stuff. I could make a career out of this guy. You see how clever this part is? How it doesn't require a shred of proof? And most paranoid delusions are intricate, but this is brilliant. The film is worth checking out just for Bill Paxton being the first of Terminator's victims. After all, he's Bill Paxton. He had it coming. Hey, I think this guy's a couple cans short of a six-pack. You're close. Give them to me. Now. Fuck you, asshole. For a budget less than $10 million, the Terminator has aged pretty well, especially when viewing the post-apocalyptic sequences in the future. The stop animation of the Terminator is one of the few bits that looks a bit poor today, but it's a small segment of the actual flick. The action sequences are done with clarity, and Brad Fiedel's 80 synthesized score is a heart thumper. Coming off the success of films like Star Wars, Blade Runner, and more, The Terminator was a significant stamp in the sci-fi action genre made with economic precision. That's it for the movie you want. Have a good day, folks. Until next time.